so a lot of it's in there. Um, basically, I thank you for allowing me to come before you and um, present myself. I've been working a long time to uh, get to this stage, and I say that because, as you can see, my career has been in public service, um, law enforcement in Michigan, just outside of Detroit, and um, left that to go to law school truthfully because I thought I could be a better prosecutor than the prosecutors I was dealing with in Detroit as a police officer. And so I left um, law enforcement, uh, the town I was working for, I could kind of see the writing on the wall as far as financially. Um, they did end up laying off most of the police force at one point after I left. So I got out to um, start a career in prosecution, came down to Florida State, most because of the weather, truthfully. Um, I was kind of sick of Detroit, so I came down to Florida State um, and had some friends here in the 18th. Uh, police chief that was up in Detroit was police chief for Coco, kind of introduced me to the area. My wife, who's a victim advocate, um, was offered a job at the same time here um, with uh, late Mr. Wolfinger, and so we made our way here to the 18th Circuit raised our family and I've progressed through this career and ultimately um, I feel uh, judge is kind of the ultimate public service for the community and so I've been reaching towards this goal I felt it necessary to get the proper amount of experience under my belt before going through this process or an election um, I feel at this point it just I talked to my wife and family over the Christmas break about this opportunity, not specifically being appointed, but just about time for me to progress towards um, becoming a judge. And we were in agreement that it's about the time. And coincidentally, when we came back from break and heard that Judge Earp was retiring, I hurried to get this application done. And um, now I'm here before you to answer any questions. Mr. Robinson. Good morning, Mr. Peacock. Hi. Uh, first thing I want to ask you is, uh, you know, how do you think that your experience as a, a law enforcement officer will contribute or make you a better judge? Well, I really think it all boils down to stress. Being a police officer is very stressful sometimes, but it's usually during those times that you have to make quick decisions. Um, I feel that my experience, as you can see, I progressed very rapidly through the police department. I was spent three years in um, on patrol. Um, part of that was in our federal housing unit. Um, the city of Inkster was pretty much 50% federal housing. Um, best job I had in law enforcement, truthfully. I was able to work with um, the DEFI program that I mentioned in my application, Drug Education for Youth, where we were trying to develop better relationships with children that were in the federal housing unit. I'm sure, as you know, sometimes those relationships between um, the citizens in that community and the law enforcement aren't that good. So we, were, we would take the children to camps in the summer, um, provide them breakfast when they may not have some. And so um, after that, I became a detective, then a sergeant, and I left as commander, which was third in charge of the police department. And throughout that is tough decisions, on a on short um, notice and becoming informed with the information that you need to make that decision and I was able to do that and really that's been kind of the theme of my whole career. Thank you. Next question I'd like to ask you is um, uh, for a period of time you were also the, the training attorney. I mean, you trained at the state attorney's office uh, new mystery attorneys. What are some of the um, the virtues or aspects or is that you try to instill to those attorneys, the young attorneys? Well, and of course, uh, you came through that um, program and you would know my constraints that I had at the time as that training attorney. Um, there was a um, kind of a micromanager um, 
head of the division, I was kind of the assistant. So a lot of my decisions at that point were based on how she would think about um, those decisions. I understand you know, that, but I'm curious about you know your philosophies. And <clears throat> losing my voice, I'm sorry. But your philosophies and your thoughts that you were trying to instill in young prosecutors. Right. And so what I was going to get to was now as a division chief, I kind of still I have those responsibilities again to oversee not only young attorneys but also seasoned attorneys um, as they progress. And what I try to instill to them is what I think the Office of the State Attorney has instilled to me is that our goal is to do the right thing at the State Attorney's Office. It is not always to seek convictions or prosecute matters that shouldn't be prosecuted. Um, I feel in the 13 years that I've been there, my bosses have instilled that in me, and that's what I try to instill in young prosecutors. I have an example recently. Um, we were in court. I have a brand new attorney that just came up from misdemeanor, and she was attempting to plead out a case in court. And maybe she could have gotten a plea to a felony, but when we looked at the case, I told her, how would you prove that? You can't prove that that is a felony. This is a, it was a burglary, it happened to be a burglary. And so I told her, you have a trespass, maybe. You can't prove that they went into that house to commit an offense therein. And so that's what I try to instill people that we have to make. We have a lot of power. I've always had a lot of power. Police have a lot of power to take citizens um, and put them in jail. State attorneys have a lot of power to make these type of decisions. And we have to use that um, power and use it in a sense of fairness and, you know, it's cliche, but justice. That's what we need to see. And that doesn't always mean getting a conviction for the highest crime or the most prison time. It means that we are supposed to be fair and that's how we should use the power. And that's what I try to instill, not in just the young attorneys, but every attorney that I supervise at this point. <clears throat> Sorry, there was no voice, no further questions. Sure. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so your experience thus far has been solely criminal. Um, what have you done, if anything, thus far to sort of be familiar or get familiar with other areas of law? And what would you do if you were to be appointed? Well, I think that most attorneys have specialized in a certain type of law. I happen to spe have specialized in criminal law, but I haven't been um, sheltered from other aspects of the law. Even in criminal law, um, at Florida State University, I was in a clinic um, and helped people receive civil injunctions, go to court for injunctions. Um, as a law enforcement officer, I was involved in civil forfeiture proceedings. Um, a case that I have with Mr. Robinson involves civil forfeiture proceedings along with a criminal matter. Um, we have injunctions all the time that um, civil injunctions that come into play when you're dealing with criminal law. So we have to study those issues and we have to learn from the attorneys that may be specialized in that. Um, I know Mr. Pickett um, as I said my wife was a, is a victim advocate. Mr. Pickett represents a client who's a victim in a criminal case and their civil case and the criminal case, I don't want to say go hand in hand, but one could affect the other. And so um, Mr. Pickett being versed in uh, civil law, if I had to make a decision, um, I would reach out to people that I know in the civil arena to help me with understanding maybe the aspects that I'm not getting in criminal law. And I think you do that as a judge too. I think that. Um, my understanding is you have a mentor um, judge that you would be paired up with. And if I had a question, um, if I was placed on a family docket or a civil docket, then I would um, reach out to that mentor. And of course, a civil docket is going to be harder for me than a criminal docket. I mean, it's not, I'm not hiding that fact. But as attorneys, we're trained to study the law, and I believe that that's something that I would have to do. I'd have to work extra hard, which um, I'm dedicated to do that. Um, I've shown that I put in the time to um, progress in my career, and that's just another uh, thing I would have to do for that type of document. Thank you, Mr. Barron. 
Good morning. Good morning. Guess what? I'm from Detroit. I, I, I know. <laughs> I saw that. It, I mean, Ford Motor sorry, Company, it, honest. It, 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 I commend you for your service with the city of Minster because I know that's a very difficult time. Thank you. Extremely violent. And uh, back during the time, I know there was a lot of corruption in the city. Uh, Mr. Peacock, though, you think you could be fair to the other side? I know I could. You could? I've watched your career, and I just I know you're not a real Rosales prosecutor, but I was asking for the other commissioners to, to hear. No, I appreciate the opportunity to address that because I know that that's a probably a, in my case it's a misconception that I feel that I'm I do that every day. I have to be fair to the other side. Um, as I said, with the power the power to decide to charge someone or to go forward with a case makes me have to. Uh, listen to the other side. I feel like I have a good relationship with all the um, assistant public defenders that I've dealt with and um, private counsel because there's always two sides to a story. I've seen that on the road in Inkster, Michigan, and I've seen it as a division chief that that's something as a prosecutor you have to do because everybody in the courtroom is seeking justice, and I think that everybody should be able to do the other person's job. I, I feel that I should be able to represent a defendant. I feel that I should be able to be a judge because we all have different roles. I take my role as a prosecutor very serious, and part of that role is um, listening and determining, and eventually, sometimes the cases work out where you have to go to trial because you can't agree. But, I don't think that I push things to trial unfairly, and I think that I would uh, be a fair on the bench as far as sentencing, um, rulings, because that's a whole, that's a different job, and that would be my role at that time. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks, sir. And Mr. Peacock, we appreciate uh, the completeness of your answers, uh, but we are gonna keep this on time, so if you could uh, be a little shorter. Okay. I think all the commissioners in the courtroom has to do with decorum. And the decorum in the courtroom is going to be set by the judge. So I believe that a temperament, you have to be um, civil, you have to be able to listen, but you also have to take the chance if someone is getting heated or the argument is getting heated, you have to be able to take charge. And I think that's an aspect that um, maybe Mr. Robinson was referring that maybe my police work would be helpful to that because there's times where things were getting out of control and you have to take charge. So I believe that's what a judge has to do. Mr. Fair. I commend you on the, all the service you, you did in Detroit and, and here as a police officer and now as a prosecutor. It sounds like you're, you're a wonderful prosecutor. You have a great mindset to seek justice, not being everyone else. And so I, I'm confident the community gets a lot of benefit from being in that position. And so my question is, why do you think the community is better served with you as a judge rather than in a very important position that you're in right now? Because I think that the community expects judges to be at a certain level in their career. I, I think that they believe that judges um, are at the top of the legal profession. And that's why I've waited to get to this process because I felt personally that I needed to get there. You need the time. You need the trial experience. You need to be able to study the law. So I think that the community will be served because I think I will meet those expectations now um, based on my career and based on where we're at. And I think that's how the community will be served. Thank you. Mr. Pickle. Hello. Hi. Um, so I'm familiar with you having been a former colleague and um, obviously bring a lot of experience. And you, you referenced earlier um, having to make difficult decisions both as a police officer and the prosecutor. And, uh, the nine of us are going to have to make very difficult decisions um, among some very qualified applicants. Um, so we have 16 applicants this time, two of whom are from the Office of State Attorney, you and Kathy Spider. Um, and I know you know her and are friends with her. How would you differentiate yourself from her um, as we're considering applicants with similar backgrounds? I was scared of this question. 
because you, you don't want to get put, I've watched the videos of other applicants. So, I, Kathy Spiker is uh, a great attorney. Like you said, we've been friends. I feel that I bring a little more confidence to my decisions than maybe Kathy. And I believe that although our titles as division chief are similar, I believe that my um, rise through the state attorney's office was a little quicker. And I'm in a division chief's position where there's multiple attorneys that I'm responsible for to supervise along with support staff. And I feel that the um, state attorney, Mr. Archer, has put me in that position because he's recognized that I have the skill set and the mentality in order to lead the new attorneys or the attorneys in my division and prosecute the way that he believes that we should prosecute at the state attorney's office. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. I'm just going to piggyback on that question. Um, how long have you been a division chief? And what, did I get the title right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Tends to be a bureau chief. Um, division chief, and what types of Responsibilities. You mentioned here that you're in the um, that you handle all of the homicides. Can you just explain a little bit about your responsibilities? Right. I so I've been a division chief now going on um, two years, one full year, and going into my second year. Um, but I had some responsibilities before when the division chief we knew he was going to retire. So I started getting homicide cases assigned to me before I was actually a division chief. Um, so any case that involves a death that comes into my division, I'm responsible for it. Now, sometimes I farm them out to other attorneys who want the experience of handling those cases so they can progress in there. But most first degree murder cases, um, I handle solely and bring someone on with me so they can get the experience. So I have that responsibility, but I also have to take normal cases with letters because of our, our docket is so big, I can't have them do that. So I have a normal docket. So I have about 80 cases and most, and some of them are murders, but I'm responsible to oversee all um, prosecutions that involve a death. How are you? Good, thank you. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you. <clears throat> My question for you is, you mentioned um, earlier in distinguishing yourself from the other candidate that you had a little more confidence in your decisions. If you were appointed uh, to the circuit seat um, and you find yourself in a scenario where you're presiding over a complex medical malpractice case, would you still exude that same confidence in your decisions? And if so, why? And if not, please explain. I believe that I would be confident in any decision I make. I, I believe that that's my nature. Um, it wouldn't matter the case. As a judge, there's two parties presenting to you, and then there's case law that you follow, and then there's, and so if I wasn't confident on the spot, then I would take the break to research it myself. I feel that I'm uh, good at researching. I uh, do it regularly for the criminal bench, or for the criminal uh, prosecution side. So um, I don't have any hesitation that I would be as confident in those decisions um, no matter what docket I was on. And if I wasn't confident at the time, I would make myself confident and before actually making a uh, ruling. And in follow up to that, I know it's been touched upon, um, but briefly, um, with your background being primarily in the criminal sector, um, outside of talking to other attorneys that are seasoned in areas that you're not, um, what other resources would you utilize to educate yourself in those areas of civil practice? I'm not familiar with judges in the CLE programs, but I would hope that if they didn't have it, I would be able to take CLE programs. Um, and now they do a lot online. So, um, you know, that would be part of the research aspect or the learning part. Uh, I have most of my CLEs now are in criminal law, just the nature of the job, but I, I know that they're out there, and if when people have left our office, um, practicing mostly criminal, but then they go out to other areas, that's how you have to learn through that, um, through the uh, textbooks, and, and that's what I would do in order to gain that knowledge and move 
move forward. In a matter of seconds, we a sitting United States Supreme Court or Florida Supreme Court justice uh, for whom you have high regard, and if so, why? You know, who, Clarence Thomas is uh, someone that pops to my head. I, I didn't expect this question, but um, when you say that, and it was because of what he went through in the nomination progress, and that was when I was um, younger. And I, it, it sticks out in my head, the, the news reports and what he went through to um, become and uh, have to endure to be a Supreme Court justice, so I guess that would be my answer. Thank you, our time is out. Okay. Thanks so much for applying. Thank you, and I thank you for um, taking your time to serve on this commission. So the uh, commission will be in recess. Uh, I'm going to remind the commissioners that even though we'll be eating lunch together, uh, we are not to speak about the um, business of the commission in any way, only uh, personal conversations, chatting, but nothing about the applicants or any deliberations. Thank you.